Good afternoon, math students. I hope you're having a great day. Let's learn about some cool, cool concepts today. We're going to start with congruence, and that simply means that two figures, in this case triangles, are identical. They have the same size and the same shape. So based on that, do these two triangles appear to be congruent? I would say yes, but let's check it. I'll slide the blue triangle on top of the yellow triangle and cha-ching, they are identical. So these two triangles are congruent. Now sometimes what they do is they rotate or orient one or both the triangles in a different way, maybe something like this. If that happens, that's all good. These two triangles are still considered congruent. Now let's look at these same two triangles. Since we know they are congruent, it tells us a lot. It tells us that all corresponding sides have the same length and corresponding angles have the same measure. And let me show you what that means. And when I say corresponding, I mean things that match up. For example, this side length or this side matches up with this side, so they correspond. And for example, this angle corresponds or matches up with this angle. So you should just see from that little demonstration that first corresponding side sides have the same length. The next ones have the same length and so do the next ones. Let's check the angle measures. Same, same, same. So what you need to remember is if two triangles are congruent, corresponding sides have the same length and corresponding angles have the same measure. Let's look at these two triangles. Do they appear to be congruent? It's kind of hard to tell, so let's just slide this blue triangle on top of the yellow triangle and see what happens. It's not looking too good, no. The yellow triangle is bigger than the blue triangle, so these two triangles are not congruent. What about these two triangles? They appear to be congruent. Now I'm going to show you a shortcut here because when you're taking a test, you can't necessarily slide one triangle on top of the other. And I'm just going to show you one shortcut. You're going to learn many more in the future. But I can guarantee you, without sliding the blue triangle on top of the yellow triangle, that these two triangles are congruent. By the, and it's called the side, side, side shortcut, or SSS. And that simply means that all three corresponding sides have the same length. For example, this is three, this is three. This is four, this is four. This is five, this is five. So by the SSS or side, side, side shortcut, I can guarantee you these are congruent and you don't even need to check it, but let's do anyway. You can see they are identical. Let's go to the next cool concept, similarity. Similarity simply means that two figures have the same shape, but not necessarily the same size. So do you think these two triangles are similar? It's really hard to tell. So one thing you can do is check the angle measures. If the corresponding angles have the same measure, then the triangles are similar. So let's check it. Same measure, same measure, same measure. So these two triangles are similar because the corresponding angles have the same measure. And there's other shortcuts for similarity that you're going to learn in the future as well. Let's look at these two triangles. Do they appear to be similar? It's kind of hard to tell. Now, they're obviously not congruent because the yellow triangle is smaller than the blue triangle, but let's check for similarity. Let's check that first corresponding angle. Not the same measure. Second one same measure. Third one, not the same measure. So these two triangles are not similar because the correspond, all three corresponding angles don't have the same measure. What about these two triangles? Do they appear to be similar? Again, it's hard to tell. And they're not congruent, right? The yellow triangle is bigger than the blue triangle. But there's another way to check for similarity. If corresponding sides are in proportion, the triangles are similar. And you're probably thinking, what does proportion mean? 
It simply means that if I divide the three sides, the corresponding three sides, and I get the same number, that means that the sides are in proportion. So let me show you this process here. Let's look at the yellow triangle. And when I'm dealing with similarity, I almost always start from the second triangle and move back to the first triangle. So if you notice here, this side here is the shortest side, this six is the shortest side of the yellow triangle. And the shortest side of the blue triangle is the three. That means that this side corresponds to this side. So let's divide them. What's six divided by three? That's two. Let's continue. What's eight? divided by 4. That's 2. What's 10 divided by 5? That's 2. Therefore, these two triangles are similar because when we divided corresponding sides, we got 2 in each situation. That means the sides are in proportion as well. Another way to look at the 2 is the other way. You could say 3 times 2 is 6. 4 times 2 is 8. And 5 times 2 is 10. That's another way to look at it. What about here? Are these two hexagons similar? Well, they appear to be congruent. So if two figures are congruent, they have to be similar. So let's check for congruency. Boom, they, ma they match up, right? They're identical. So since these two figures are congruent, they have to be similar. In other words, if two figures are congruent, it guarantees similarity. However, the reverse is not always true. If two, if two figures are similar, they are not necessarily congruent. I'm going to let you think about that one for a second. And while you're thinking, we're going to move on to a couple problems here. So the first thing I want to look at is this problem. Let's go ahead and read it. It says, assume the missing side wait wait i'm sorry let's start up here assume the following triangles are similar that's important when two triangles are similar the sides are in proportion and we need to know that find the missing side length and the scale factor and we'll get to the scale factor in a second but let's start right here at this first bullet point i'm going to show you two ways to do it i'm going to show you the easy way first which doesn't always work but it will here we're looking for this missing side length x. I know the triangles are similar. That means the sides are in proportion. So here's how I go about it. I look at this short side. It corresponds with this side here. So what can I multiply this 6 by to get to 18? Hopefully you're thinking 3. If you can't figure it out, you could also go 18 divided by 6, and that'll give you the 3. Now, let's go to this next side length. We have to multiply it by the same number because the triangles are similar. So I'll multiply it by 3 as well. And that should give me this side length. And it does. 11 times 3 is 33. That tells me I have to multiply this missing side length by 3 as well. And then I say to myself, what number can I replace the x with and multiply it by 3 to get 63? Well, hopefully you're thinking 21. And that's the missing side length because 21 times 3 is 63. And if you couldn't get that, you could also say 63 divided by 3 to get the 21. So that's the answer. This missing side length right here is 21. Right here. Now I'm going to show you the other way, because sometimes it's not so simple, the numbers that you're working with. Here's the hard way. So what I do is I set up a proportion. I'm going to actually erase that 21, pretending we don't know it. And I look at my missing side length, which is x. And I say to myself, what does that correspond? What does it correspond with this side length? It corresponds with this side length. So I make a ratio, x divided by 63 equals, and then I pick one other side length. It could either be the 6 or the 11. I'll pick the 6. So 6 corresponds with? 18 and I'll write the ratio 6 over 18. So here's what I did. I said x divided by 63 and I forgot the 3 here. My bad. Let's do that again. x divided by 63 equals 6 divided by 18 and that's how I got this proportion. Now real quick, instead of 6 over 18 as I said earlier, you could use another side length. You could do 11 
divided by 33 and put that here. You'll get the same answer, but I'm, I'm going to just stick with the 6 over 18. And now we just need to solve this. And hopefully you remember that you cross multiply when you deal with proportions. And by the way, the reason I can set up this proportion is because it tells us that the triangles are similar. So here's how you solve the proportion. You cross multiply 18 times x this way is 18x. And then you cross multiply this way, 63 times 6. And I'll just write that down. So I went 18 times x, put that here, and 63 times 6, I put it here. And let's just solve this. So 18x equals 63 times 6 is 378. And hopefully you remember that the last step is to divide by 18. Because to undo multiplication, the x is multiplied by 18. To undo multiplication, you do division. So we'll divide both sides by 18. The 18s drop off, bring down your x, and 378 divided by 18 is 21. There we go. We, that's what we got the first time. We got 21 here. So two ways to do it. Now, the next thing I want to go over is the scale factor. And again, let me actually, let me just write this in here. This was 21, so we don't forget. The scale factor is pretty straightforward. You just have to remember one thing. You want to work from your second triangle to the first triangle. So I'm going to start with my second triangle and I'm going to pick one side only. You can pick any one. I'm going to pick the six. So I'm going to pick the six and I'm going to divide that by its corresponding side, which is 18. Six divided by 18. I'll reduce this and I have my scale factor. So to reduce this, well, let's see. Six is the same as six times one because six times one is six. 18 is the same as six times three because 6 times 3 is 18, and then the 6s drop off, and I'm left with 1 third. So that's my scale factor. Now again, you could have said 11 divided by 33 and reduced it, and you'd get 1 third as well. You could even do 21 divided by 63 and reduce it, and you'll get 1 third. One quick thing about the scale factor. I knew right away that the scale factor was going to be less than 1, and greater than 0 technically, but I'm just going to say less than 1 for right now. And this is how I knew. The original triangle is the first triangle you see. It became smaller. So whenever that happens, it tells me that the scale factor has to be less than 1. Now, if the original triangle was small and became bigger, then the scale factor would be greater than 1. So that's kind of a good thing to know. Let's go to problem 2 here. It says in the diagram to the right, and it should say below, the smaller triangle inside of the larger triangle is similar to the larger triangle. Write a proportion and solve for x. So we have similar again, right? That's important. That tells me that the sides are in proportion. What's tricky about this is I'm dealing with two triangles. So when you're just learning this and you get a problem like this, draw two separate triangles as follows to help you. I'm going to draw this triangle right here, the x, the x by 2 triangle. We'll get it as good as I can. Not bad. I'll bring my 2 over. I'll bring my x over. And I'll bring this little right um, angle marking over. This, this little marking just means it's a right triangle. There's a reason it's in there, but I'm not going to get into it right now. Now we're going to draw the large triangle, and I'll do the best I can with that one. Not bad, I'll take it. There we go. I'll bring this 6 over. Now what's this side length here? That's tricky. Think about this for a second. This side length, what is it? we got to look over at the original triangle. What do you think I'm going to write right here? Hopefully you are thinking x plus 8 because this side length is x plus 8. And that's what I'll write here. Now, I need to, the goal, remember, is to find this missing side length right here. Let me write that x plus 8 just a little better. x plus 8. That's about the same. Whatever. Now, 
I'm going to show you two ways to do this. So the first way doesn't always work, but it's easier if it does work. So the goal again is to find this missing side length right here, X. So here's what I do. I know these two triangles are similar. So I say to myself, two times what gives me six? Hopefully you're thinking three, right? Two times three. Two times three is six. That means I have to multiply this side length by three as well because they're similar triangles. And then what I'm going to do is just use trial and error. I'm going to plug in a number for X. How about, let's start with one. Let's plug in one for X. So if X is one, it's one times three, which is three. Then I'm going to plug in one for X here. And one plus eight is nine. These two numbers do not come out the same, so X is not one. Let's try two. Let's plug in two for X. Two times three is six. Let's plug in two for X here. Two plus eight is 10. These two numbers are not the same, so X cannot be two. Let's try, I'm gonna skip three. Let's try four. Let's plug in four for X. Four times three is 12. And let's plug in four for X here. Four plus eight is 12. So when I plug in four for X, I get out the same number. That means X is four. And I am done. Now, let me show you the more traditional or difficult way that you might have to use on a test or for numbers that are more difficult. I'm going to actually set up a proportion. And remember, this was four. We know that. I'll leave that in there. So let's set up our proportion like we did in the other problem. The six matches up with the two. So I'm going to write this proportion. Six divided by two equals X plus eight divided by X. Again, here's how I did it. I just divided corresponding sides. And I can do this because the triangles are similar. Six divided by two equals X plus eight divided by X. And then we just cross multiply and solve and we should get four because we already did it. Let's do this. Cross multiply this way. Six times X is six X. Then I'm going to multiply the two with the X plus eight, but I got to put parentheses around this because I'm multiplying the two with the whole quantity. So it's two times this whole quantity X plus eight. Don't forget those parentheses. So again, just to repeat, six times X is six X, and then two times the quantity X plus eight right here. There's more than one way to solve this. I'm gonna use the distributive property. We'll distribute the two with the X and with the eight. And I'll bring down my six X. Bring down my equal sign, two times X is two X. Bring down your plus sign, two times eight is 16. And now I just meet, need to move this two X over with the six X because they're like terms. So to get rid of that two X, I'll just subtract it to make it go to zero. What you do to the right side, you have to do to the left side of the equation. And the two X's drop off to zero and six X minus two X is four X. Bring down your equal sign, bring down your 16, and the last step is to divide by 4. The 4's drop off, and x equals 16 divided by 4 is 4. And you get the same thing that we got the first time. Well, I hope that was helpful for you. I really appreciate you watching my video. Have a great day.